Miller's Tire and Auto Care. Need to hire experienced technicians, oil change, tire technician, tow truck drivers, exceptional benefits, and pay. Drop your resume off at Miller's Tire on the Big Hill Avenue location. Four high schools, seven middle schools, one college and a university, and much more. Now introducing your most comprehensive weekly local sports show in Madison County, the Richmond Register Sports Show. The Richmond Register Sports Show is brought to you by Metronet, super fast internet, simply a better connection. Total Comfort, heating and air conditioning. Let Total Comfort keep you cool or warm this winter. Call for service or for a free replacement quote. Winds Auto Detailing Service. Platinum Roofing, Solar and Green Solutions. Voted Richmond's best roofer seven years in a row. And by KYmedia.net, digital media solutions on your terms. Here's your host for all things local sports, the Richmond Register Sports Editor, Nathan Hutchison. Welcome to this week's edition of the Richmond Register Sports Show. My name is Nathan Hutchinson. I'm the sports editor of the Richmond Register, and I very much appreciate you tuning us in this week. Coming up in just a few minutes, we will be joined by Madison Southern's Reagan Patterson and her coach slash dad, Judd Patterson. And uh, on Thursday, Reagan uh, won the KHSAA State Diving Championships up at the University of Kentucky in Lexington. Uh, it was a victory in dramatic fashion. We're going to tell you all about it here in just a few minutes, but uh, we're looking forward to uh, Reagan and Judd coming in here and uh, telling us all about not just the state championship, but uh, all about their family. Uh, they have uh, uh, Judd has three daughters who have died for Madison Southern, so uh, st- stay tuned for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. But as always, we like to start off the show with a recap of the week that was in Madison County sports, and there is a ton of stuff to get to, diving, swimming, wrestling, uh, high school hoops, college hoops. But, of course, uh, when you have a state championship, you got to start off with the state champion right at the very top of the, of the recap, right? So uh, Thursday afternoon at the University of Kentucky, uh, juniors Reagan Patterson and Peyton Moore of Cooper uh, really came into the KHSAA state championships as the two favorites uh, to win the state championships. Obviously, Peyton Moore had won uh, the title the last two years. Reagan had finished se- uh, third last year, second the year before that. Uh, these two young ladies had faced off at the premier high school diving event about a month back at the University of Kentucky as well, where Reagan beat Peyton. And, uh, but uh, the, the, certainly these young ladies uh, lived up to the billing, lived up to the hype as both of them broke uh, the state the scoring record, which had stood for 11 years, but in the end, by two-tenths of a point, it was Reagan Patterson uh, claiming her first state championship with a total score of 512.5, uh, beating out Peyton Moore, who had a 512.30, so just two-tenths of a point. And uh, for the most, uh, the, through the preliminary rounds and through the semifinal rounds and uh, heading into the final uh, dive of the three-dive uh, championship round, uh, Peyton Moore was in the lead. Uh, on Reagan Patterson's final dive, uh, she hit a forward two and a half somersault, and with a score of 62.4, which put her into the lead. Uh, Peyton Moore came up just a couple of divers later, uh, attempted the same dive, and came up with uh, actually a very excellent dive, but it scored just a little bit less uh, than Reagan's dive, which ended up giving Patterson the championship. Like I said, by just that two tenths of a point. Yeah! And uh, we kind of referenced it at the beginning, but uh, the Patterson family has had three sisters who have uh, all reached the podium at the KHSAA State Championships. Uh, we started off years ago with Flannery, then Laney, and now uh, Reagan. And uh, those three young ladies since 2015 had had 13 top 10 finishes. Uh, never had a state championship, though. Uh, it was a three second place finishes, three third place finishes, uh, but the Patterson family finally got their state championship on Thursday. And Reagan will be back for another year, so might be able to add to that as well. But like I said, uh, Reagan and uh, Judd will be here in just a minute, so hang around for that. You're going to get a lot of uh, good information, not just about uh, their family and diving, but just about the sport in general. So stick around for that. The KHSAA Swimming Championships uh, continued all weekend at the University of Kentucky. The girls were on Friday, the boys were on Saturday, and we'll start with the boys because Madison Central's uh, sophomore Caden Graves reached the podium uh, three times on Thursday. He finished seventh in the 100 fly, he finished 14th in the 200 free, and he was part of two relay teams which also had seventh place finishes. Central's 200 medley relay team of Caden Graves Uh, Cade Kustra, Luke Geely, and Jack Jack Voss was 7th, and the 200 free relay team of uh, Graves, Kustra, Voss, and Logan Hendrich was also 7th. Senior Jack Voss was 28th in the 50 free and 29th in the 100 free. 
Kustra was uh, 30th in the 100 back, 31st in the 200 IM, and uh, Central finished in 10th place with uh, 63 points. Models Colin Jackson was 9th in the 100 free, 12th in the 100 back. Uh, Tanner Jackson uh, was 37th in the 500 free, and Carson Neal was 37th in the 200 IM. Model also had a couple of strong relay performances, finishing 13th in the 200 uh, free and 19th in the 200 medley. On the girls' side, it was a pair of 8th graders who were the standouts for Madison Central. Uh, Lena Brown, 9th in the 100 fly, 11th in the 200 IM, and uh, Marley Cooksey, 9th in the 200 free and 10th in the 500 free. They were also part of two relay teams, uh, one of which reached the podium. It was the 200 free relay team of Cooksey, Brown, Emma McDowell, and Kristen Eads, which finished 7th, and the 200 medley relay team of Cooksey, Brown, Eads, and McDowell finished 11th. McDowell was also 24th in the 100 free and 30th in the 50 free. And Central finished 12th as a team with 67 points. So uh, on Saturday, the high school uh, wrestling season took its second step uh, in the postseason. Of course, this is uh, the third straight year. Now we've had what they call a state first round. So we go through a regional, and we go to a state first round, and then we go to a state final round. And how this works is the top four competitors uh, top four finishers in each weight class from each region move on to the semi-state or the state first round, and the top eight in each weight class from both of the two first round sites get to move on to next weekend state championship in Winchester. And we will have six uh, young men from Madison County who will be moving on to the state championships, three from Madison Central and three from Madison Southern. Uh, but for Madison Southern, it's Stephen Whitehead at 285, uh, Chris Begley at 144, and uh, Braden Kelly at 150, and for Madison Central it's Carson Herbst at 138, Robert Nardelli at 132, and Lucas Hutchinson at 157. Uh, Central and Southern competed at the Ryle uh, semi-state on Friday, or state first round, uh, if you want to call it that, but uh, uh, Stephen Whitehead finished uh, first in his division to move to 47-0 and on the season. Uh, Chris Bagley was the runner-up in his weight class, and uh, Carson Herbst was third in his weight class. So. Like I said, six young men from Madison County moving on to the state championships, which will be held Friday and Saturday at George Rogers Clark High School over in Winchester. Well, this was the final week of the regular season for high school basketball in Kentucky, and the 44th District Tournament will get started on Monday night over at Alumni Coliseum. The schedule goes like this. Monday night, Madison Central and Model, 6.30 and 8.15 with the girls up first, followed by the boys. Tuesday, Madison Southern versus Berea Community with the uh, same, same time, 6.30 and 8.15 with the girls going first. And the championship game Friday, uh, 6.30 and 8.30 with the, the girls up first again. And of course, the top two teams, as always, will move on to the 11th Region Tournament uh, next week, which we assume will be held here at Eastern Kentucky University. I uh, haven't heard uh, confirmation on that, but we certainly hope that will be the case as it usually is. And if you're over there, shameless plug, I'll be over there handing out these cool shirts to the, to the student section over at the, all four student sections, uh, all three nights of the tournament. So come uh, flag me down, say hello to me, and I'll throw you a shirt. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but this was uh, last week of the regular season. Um, lots of action, lots of senior night. We were, I think we, were, we, I think we got to every senior night uh, across the county, and all those pictures are up across our social media sites. Uh, so if you want to get a chance to go uh, check those out. But Friday night in particular was a very busy night around the county with seven of the eight local high school teams in action. But we're going to take you through every team like we always do. We'll start off on the girls' side with Madison Central. A couple of games last week, Tuesday a 72-63 loss at Corbin. And they bounced back on Friday night with an emphatic 68-24 loss, or 64-28 win over East Jesmond. The, uh, uh, the win over East Jesmond snapped a two-game losing streak for Central, and they jumped out to a 23-7 lead after the first quarter. Brittany Campbell with a career-high 18 points. Ten players scored. No one played more than 21 minutes, and uh, there was a lot of fun to be had for the, on the uh, Madison Central bench, bench as the uh, – Lady Indians rolled to an easy victory. And afterwards, I got a chance to talk to Coach Scott True and Brittany Campbell. All right, we're here at Madison Central High School where Lady Indians have closed out the regular season with a 68-24 win over East Jesmond. Uh, Brittany Campbell and uh, the 11th Region Coach of the Year, Scott True. Congratulations, Coach, and Thank congratulations you. on the win. Appreciate it very much. It, it's all about these young ladies and the buying they've got. It's really their award, not mine. I'm really appreciative of them, what we've done. Uh, we played well tonight. We got some offense, some um, off our defense. Uh, we got back some things we hadn't been doing particularly well the last couple games. 
Uh, really proud of the effort tonight. Yeah. yeah. Brittany, 18, 18 points is a career high, but I'm sure uh, you're more interested in getting the win because you guys had a couple of losses back-to-back uh, -back on the road. So you get back here at home. Kind of what was the, the game plan coming into this one? Uh, to get after it defensively and talk and have energy. Play the team. Yeah. Coach, there's two losses on the road. Kind of, uh, what did you guys kind of glean out of them? I mean, you guys uh, played pretty well offensively, but I guess it was defensively you probably weren't. Yeah, we struggled defensively a little bit. We gave up a lot of points we don't normally do. Now, those two really, really good teams uh, that played really well. Uh, and I, I felt like we kind of gotten away from some things that uh, it's probably my fault in practice. We need to go back and reemphasize the defensive side of things, and we did that this week, and I felt like it showed tonight. Um, th those were not terrible efforts on the road against those teams. Um, we just didn't quite execute down the stretch like we wanted to, and tonight we got back to the basics, so to speak, and did what we, and did what we need to do to win. Yeah. And Brittany, what did you kind of take out of those two, two losses there, two tough ones on the road to two, two good teams? Um, we didn't really play our best. We had a team we work over there. Focus. Yeah. Okay. You guys got a few days off uh, before a Monday against Model over at the uh, mm -hmm. District Tournament. So, kind of, what's the schedule for you guys going on? Uh, we'll, we'll practice a little bit tomorrow, kind of, and get some prep done for Model because Sunday's really going to be a shooting day. We get to go over to EKU and shoot a little bit. Everybody gets to rotate through, so we'll do that on Sunday, uh, and then we'll go play uh, Model Monday night and hopefully, uh, hopefully, do what we're supposed to do there and, and maybe get to the district championship on Friday. Yeah, Brittany, you guys, have you guys started looking at the film on those guys yet? Oh, yeah. Got them scouting up pretty good already? Yeah. yeah. She knows. <laughs> she knows. All right, we'll see you Monday night over there. Congratulations. Appreciate. As you see, we referenced in the video there that uh, earlier this week, Scott uh, True was named the 11th Region Coach of the Year, 19-6 and six in his first season at Madison Central. Uh, very well-deserved honor, and uh, the uh, Indians will, uh, Lady Indians will open up uh, postseason play uh, Monday night against uh, Model over at Alumni Coliseum. Madison Southern's girls, a uh, couple of games this past week on Wednesday night, 56-42 uh, loss at home to Lexington Catholic, and then on Friday bounced back with a really good win, 63-34 over Scott County in a game that was played at Berea College's Alumni Coliseum. Uh, the game against Lex Cath was very interesting because it was a rematch of uh, the opening round of the 11th Region Tournament last year where Madison Southern beat Lexington Catholic at home and uh, this time around, though, the Lady Knights turned the tables on them and earned the victory. But in the victory on Friday night against uh, Scott County, 52% shooting for Madison Southern, 3 of 9 from 3-point range, 14 of 21 from the free throw line. Hadley French, 21 points. Bella Moberly, 14 points. And uh, Southern snapped a two-game skid as they head into the postseason. 17 and 13 on the season, and we'll all be anxiously awaiting that rematch with Madison or with uh, Berea Community on uh, Tuesday night at Alumni Coliseum. And speaking of Berea community, their struggles continued as they headed uh, down the uh, final week of the regular season. Uh, to uh, uh, Three losses this past week, 63-40 on uh, Tuesday at Henry Clay, then a 35-31 loss at home Wednesday to Bryan Station, and then a 53-18 loss on Friday night at Montgomery County. Six straight losses for the Lady Pirates, 15-14 uh, and 14 on the season. But of course, now everybody's 0-0. Zero and zero, so. Doesn't really matter what the, your record is at this point because uh, I want you to hit, uh, hit that Florida Alumni Coliseum on Tuesday night. That's all that matters. So, the Model Lady Patriots had just one game this week, and that was on Monday, and that was a 45-30 loss uh, to Garrett County on senior night. It was Maya Bondari, 13 points, JD Balzer, seven points, and Alyssa Hudson, six points. The Lady Patriots finished the regular season at eight and 12, and uh, Model and Madison Central will face each other in the dist in the district tournament for the seventh time since 2010. And that game, of course, is Monday night. On the boys' side of high school hoops, Madison Central with a pair of games this past week. 66-57 win over uh, South Laurel on uh, senior night Monday. And then on uh, Friday night, it was a 74-52 loss at Covington Catholic. And uh, on, uh, in the win over South Laurel, the three seniors came up big on their big night. Uh, Jalen Davis, 26 points. Uh, Jaden West, 19 points. Robbie Todd, 16 points. And uh, at the end, they got to dump water all over Coach Felthouse in the locker room. And, and Coach Ron, I think, got the majority of the water, though. But a good time was had by all, and it's always a good time when you win on senior night. But after the game, we got a chance to talk to all three seniors, Jalen, Jaden, and Robbie. And we got a special cameo uh, from our buddy, uh, uh, John Mark Stivers. We're here at Madison Central High School where the Indians have picked up a win over South Laurel on senior night. Robbie Todd, John Mark Stivers. Jaden West and Jalen Davis, and congratulations, guys. And uh, you kind of ambushed Coach in the locker room, but it's, uh, I think somebody else got the majority of that water, huh? 
Coach Ron. Coach Ron. I think I see. I think I'd be afraid to go after Alan Blue Water, but that's. Uh, I, was, yeah, I was a little bad, I ain't gonna lie. But it was 700 wins, so we had to get him back. Yeah. 701 tonight. Yeah, and one, yeah. That's right. Well, you guys, uh, wasn't a great first half. You're only out by five. Uh, take us into that locker room and what uh, what was kind of said there. Yeah, you know, the whole halftime speech was about defense. That's his main, his main focus is defense. Uh, as long as we walk in on defense, it translates into offense. First. Yeah, I think it was a 17-0 run there, Jalen. I think all three of you hit three-pointers during that run, and uh, everything got going. So kind of what changed there? Uh, just the momentum in general, like, we came down, we got a few stops, came down the court, hit a few shots. So, no man was just on our side. We got us going in the half, so it was really good. And it turned into, <laughs> from a two point game to a blowout in about three minutes there. It was really quick. Yeah, yeah the momentum definitely changed a little bit. So, uh, I was going to say last home game here, but of course, if you guys win the district, you'll have a region game here, but it still had to be special for everybody here. So, just uh, all three of you talk about what the, the night meant to you guys. Well, for, for me, it's not been five years. I feel like that last game meant a lot because I've been playing since eighth grade. So, I feel like it was. It was also it was a good win, but like a, a sad, you know, a sad time because that's my last time playing at Central. Well, until we win the region or district. <laughs> um, but uh, last regular season home game, we been a lot. Yeah, you guys could be back here, but it could be last one. Hopefully, hopefully. All right, this is my second team. Yeah. Got my got my team back in. So. Yeah. All right, John Mark. What do you want? What do you want to ask you guys? Uh, this is Crawford. How, how does it feel to get a big win tonight? Feels awesome, man. <laughs> Hey, I'm just happy we won, uh, got the team win, and spray run. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Right, and uh, while we're speaking of Jaden West there, uh, uh, earlier this week he was named the 11th Region Player of the Year by the KABC. Uh, he uh, beat out a lot of good players in the 11th Region to get that title, but he is certainly uh, very, very worthy of that honor. And uh, he's been the one who has led this team for most of the season. Uh, I mean, all three of those guys have, but... Uh, uh, with uh, 16 and 14 now on the season for the Indians. And just to show you how tough a schedule Madison Central has played, even though they are just two games over 500, they have the fifth best RPI in the very tough 11th region. So that just shows you the kind of schedule they play, including going up to a Covington Catholic on Friday night and then suffering that loss up there. So Madison Southern's Eagles wrapped up the regular season last week with a pair of games, both of them losses. On uh, Tuesday, they went up to Great Crossing and suffered an 89 to 69 setback. And then on Friday at uh, Berea College's at uh, Berea College's Seabury Center, a 74-69 loss to Bracken County against a really good Great Crossing team. Southern actually went out to an early lead, and uh, but could not hang on to that. And it was Jay Rose and uh, Braden Hudson with 20 points each. In the loss to Bracken County over at Berea College, it was uh, Zach Hudson with uh, 31 points and uh, Jay Rose with 16 points. Eagles have lost three of their last four. They're 18 and 12. Uh, but, of course, like we said, it's postseason time now. Everybody is 0-0. Zero and zero. And if you look at the matchup with Berea, Madison Southern has beaten the Pirates 14 straight times. Berea's last win in this series was back in 2011. And speaking of Berea community, uh, they, lost, uh, they have lost four straight, including a pair of games last week, 65-49 on Monday at Barberville, and then 68-42 on Friday at Sayre. And the loss to Barberville, it was Cam Puckett with 22 points. Finley Blevins with 11 points, and then the loss to Sayer, it was uh, Cam Puckett with 21 points. 9-21 and 21 to wrap up the regular season for Berea. Uh, Model Patriots had three games this past week. On Monday, a 70-40 to 40 loss at Rockcastle County. On Tuesday, a 70-62 to 62 loss at home to Bluegrass United. And then on Friday night, a 67-59 win at home over Powell County in a rather contentious game over there at the Shirley Kearns Gymnasium. They got a little... A little testy at the end. There was a one-point game late, a couple of uh, uh, technical foul calls on the Powell County bench, uh, and uh, uh, Model hit six of six free throws in the final minutes there uh, to wrap up that win. But in that victory, it was Kale Vickers and Keshoff Bondari with 18 points each, and the Patriots finish out the regular season at 13 and 16. Moving on to college hoops, and it was the final weekend of the regular season as well. Um, for the teams in the Collegiate Conference of the South, which obviously includes Berea College, uh, the Berea College women needed one win in their in the, uh, one win in their final two games uh, to uh, uh, clinch the regular season CCS title and get the right to host uh, the CCS tournament. And they took care of that on Wednesday night, senior night at the Seabury Center, and they rolled to a 77-30 win over uh, Maryville, and then just to make it even sweeter on Saturday, a 59-54 win over Bellhaven. Uh, down in Alabama. So 
Um, uh, that, uh, 23 and two on the season for the Lady Mountaineers, 15 and one overall in the win. Uh, so that, that those two wins give them the top seed and the right to host the CCS tournament, which will begin on Wednesday at the Seabury Center. And um, Brio College will take on either Agnes Scott or Wesleyan College. The semifinals are set for Friday. The finals are set for Saturday. In the win over Maryville, Berea was up 20 to 8 after the first quarter, and uh, Lynn College James had 17 points and 20 rebounds, and Jaden Merriweather had 15 points. And after the game, we had a chance to talk to Coach Trent Milby. Hi, we're here at the Seabury Center where Berea College has picked up a 77-30 win over Maryville to wrap up the regular season title for the in the Collegiate Conference of the South. Uh, Coach Trent Milby, congratulations, Coach. Thank you. And uh, obviously, uh, winning that regular season title means you get to host the conference title or conference championship. Uh, here next week, you do have one regular season game left, but uh, you'll be right back here next week and Absolutely. hopefully playing for a championship. Absolutely. Uh, got one game left, and then we go into the tournament starting Wednesday night and uh, hopefully win that and play in the semifinals Friday night and the final Saturday and then head and see what we're doing in the NCAA tournament. Uh, we got some, you know, we got some games left, and it's good, good to be at home for the tournament. Yeah, you guys did uh, have the one hiccup last weekend on the road. Uh, bounce back with two solid wins to, to wrap up that title, though. Well, I mean, they, you give credit to the great. They outplayed us. Yeah. We were a little dead, but that, it happens. I just kind of threw the game out, uh, mm -hmm. kind of refocused there. They come out with a win. They come out here tonight, and our defense was on top of its game tonight. Yeah. And uh, you're honored to your, your two seniors there, Leah Hampton and uh, Destiny Combs. So talk a little bit about those two young ladies. I mean, they came in here, you know, four years ago as freshmen, and and they were big parts of to help us get over the hump of winning the conference tournament, going to the NCAA, and then obviously COVID hit, and then we come back last year, and they just picked up where they left off, and uh, you know, I can't say enough about it, both of them. And, I know that Aaliyah's come in here. She probably go over 1,500 points in three years. Uh, Destiny's a rebounding machine. She can also score, play defense. Uh, you know, they're going to be missed. Yep. All right. Like I said, uh, conference regular season championship is still lots of goals to be uh, uh, to, to shoot for. This is just kind of the first step along the way, huh? It is, and that's uh, you know, that's our fifth straight regular season title. So I uh, mean, we're we're proud of that consistency. Uh, for the last five years since we entered uh, the NCAA Division Three uh, league, and you know we just want to keep it going. All right, congratulations. All right, well, congratulations to Coach Milby and the Lady Mountaineers as they uh, get the right to host the CCS tournament, as in they uh, uh, continue to fight for an NCAA tournament bid. Uh, the the CCS, being a new league, does not have an automatic bid to the Division Three tournament, so uh, they will have to get an at-large bid. So they may have to win the tournament uh, just enough to impress the coaches. Uh, the uh, selection committee, but 23-2 uh, and two on the season now uh, for Berea. Now the Berea men came into the final week of the regular season also needing probably at least one win uh, to wrap up a first round home game in the CCS tournament. Uh, they weren't able to get that on Wednesday on senior night when Maryville came in and beat them 72-63, to uh, but on Saturday down in Alabama they did get a 69-58 win over Bellhaven, which wrapped up the number four seed in the CCS and will give them a home game on Tuesday night at the uh, Seabury Center versus Piedmont. And uh, if they are able to win that one, they will move on to the semifinals, which will be held uh, Friday and Saturday at Maryville, which is in Tennessee. But in the uh, victory over Bellhaven on Saturday, five players reached double figures, including Isaac Cottle, who had 15 points and 10 rebounds. Mountaineers wrap up the regular season at 15 and 10 and 7 and 5 in Austin Newton's first season as coach. And like I said, Tuesday night at the Seabury Center. You'll have to, Tuesday night you'll have the men at home. Wednesday night you'll have the women at home as they head into postseason play. A Sun Hoops, uh, both the EKU men and women uh, came into this week already knowing they would be in the A Sun tournament, which is coming up uh, next week. But the positioning is still unknown, and these games that were played uh, this past week uh, certainly will have a big impact on that. Uh, both teams wrapping up their final homestands of the season. We'll start off with the men on Thursday, a 74-58 win over Central Arkansas. And then Saturday at home, a disappointing 98-93 loss in overtime to North Alabama. That leaves the EKU men at 18-11, and 11-5. They're tied for third place with Stetson. They're two games behind Liberty and Kennesaw State for first place. They are one game ahead of North Alabama for uh, fifth place, 
and two games ahead of Lipscomb for sixth place heading into the final two regular season games of the season. And uh, this is all important because only the top four seeds get to hope play host to first round games. And uh, so right now EKU sitting in a tie for third, um, but those uh, two other teams hot on their trail and uh, EKU's two final games are on the road, uh, which of course the road has not been an easy place for the Colonels this year. They are just four and eight on in true road games this season. Uh, they will be at North Florida on Thursday and then wrap up the regular season Saturday at the University of Jacksonville. So a lot of things can happen. Uh, Kennesaw State and Liberty have kind of come back to the pack. Both those teams have three losses each now. And if EKU had beaten North Alabama on uh, Saturday night, they would have been able to get within a game of them uh, with uh, two games left, but that didn't happen. But So a lot of things can happen in the final week of the season. But one thing we know for sure, EKU will be in the A-Sun tournament. Uh, just Now it just depends on where they will finish and if they get a chance to get a home game or not. EKU women are also definitely locked into the A-Sun tournament, and uh, they improved their postseason positioning last week by winning their final two regular season home games, 73-63 on uh, Thursday over North Alabama, and then 78-51 over uh, Central Arkansas Saturday on Senior Day. They sit at 16-12, and 9-6 and six in the A-Sun. They are in fifth place. Uh, the women have three games left. All of them are on the road. They are one game behind fourth place Austin P. one game ahead of Kennesaw State, though, who is in sixth place, and just two games ahead of Jacksonville State, which is in seventh place. So once again here, a lot of movement can very, could, uh, very well happen and uh, affect the positioning here. But uh, with three games left and sitting in fifth place, if the Colonels want to get a home game, probably need to get a few victories on the road. But their final three <coughs> games are on the road, Thursday at Queens, Saturday at Liberty, and then March the 1st at North Florida. So... At this point, both EKU men and women could be home for the first round. Both of them could be on the road or a combination of the both. So a lot of stuff that will be uh, up for grabs in the, in the final week of the regular season. So that's a lot of stuff. Whew, man. Randy's back there just shaking his head at me. There. That's a lot. It's a lot of stuff to get to every week. But there's a lot of stuff going on here in Madison County. That's why we do this show, and that's why we have our nightly show as well and uh, everything. But we're looking forward to seeing everybody over at Alumni Coliseum. Uh, this coming week for the uh, 44th District Tournament. I think, I think uh, I, hate to, I hate to even say this, I think it's going to be my 20th that I've covered. Uh, so I've been looking forward to it. It's always, it keeps me young. So I, I love doing it and I look forward to seeing everybody out there. And like I said, say hello to me and I'll throw you a shirt. You're the goat. Go <laughs> the goat. Oh my God. I look like a goat. <laughs> All right. Well, enough about this stuff. Let's go. <laughs> Let's invite in our guests. Well, coming back, coming up here in just a minute, we'll have Judd Patterson and state champion Reagan Patterson. Stack of the week. care need to hire experienced technicians oil change tire technician tow truck drivers exceptional benefits and pay drop your resume off at miller's tire on the big hill avenue location the richmond register sports show is brought to you by metronet super fast internet simply a better connection total comfort heating and air conditioning let total comfort keep you cool or warm this winter call for service or for a free replacement quote. Winds Auto Detailing Service. Platinum Roofing. Solar and Green Solutions. Voted Richmond's Best Roofer seven years in a row. And by KYMedia.net. Digital Media Solutions on your turn. Welcome back. We are joined by state champion diver Reagan Patterson and her dad and coach Judd Patterson. And on uh, Thursday after the UK, 
uh, we think became the first ever individual state champion in Madison Southern history, uh, picking up a dramatic victory in the championship of the one meter diving competition. Uh, it's been a few days. Has it kind of sunk in yet? I mean, it was so, uh, it was unbelievable yeah, the way that thing finished. It was amazing. Like, that's all I can describe it as. It's amazing. Yeah, and of course, hey, Coach, this has been the accumulation of a long effort because you've uh, said three daughters that uh, right. all placed at state, all got to the podium. Uh, you had three second place finishes, including one by you a couple right. of years ago, three third place finishes, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Uh, but you never had that state championship. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a special day. And it was what was interesting about it is for both Brandy and I, uh, her mother, who is the assistant coach, when we got to the finals with just three dives left, there was just kind of a calm um, about us. And, and it was because of the calm that Reagan had. She just seemed like it was her day. And it just didn't seem like anything was going to keep her from it. Yeah. And uh, and in, in times in the past, we knew that that something had to happen in order for Flannery to win. Um, one of the girls in front of her would have had to have made a mistake. And what was different about this time is Reagan was in control of her own fate. We knew that if she dove her best, she could win it. And when she had the opportunity on the last dive, she took it. Yeah, and it was amazing. And you were, you were behind most of the day, all through the preliminaries and all through the semifinals, but very close. That was always within four, five, six points. Uh, but you had probably your three toughest dives as far as degree of difficulty uh, there in the last part. So you, you obviously knew you had the opportunity to, to make up those points. Yeah, I just had to trust myself, really, because being behind the whole day, it's kind of hard to keep calm and trust yourself. But I knew, like, in those last three dives that I could catch up to her. So I just had to be like, I need to stay calm, I need to relax and get through those three dives. Yeah. And the gap never got that big. I mean, no, you, yeah. There was never really any huge separation. Yeah. You were right there with her. The and that's what I tried to maintain. I was like, okay, if I can only stay a couple points behind her, I can always catch back up. Yeah, and like you said, you, you, you guys kept it pretty light. I was watching you guys over there. You're kind of goofing off and kind of having a good time. And Yeah, if you, you know, a dive meet with 40 divers, just the Kentucky State meet starts with 40 divers, and then they make cuts as you go along. But with that many divers, you're going to be there for a couple hours. And, and it's a lot like golf, that you, you can't concentrate for that long period of time. You've got to have downtime in between. And then what Reagan does is she has a trigger diver. So some diver, four or five, six divers ahead of her, when she hears that name get called, that's her trigger. Mm -hmm. And she, at that point, then goes from relaxing and just kind of chilling to getting focused and getting ready for that next dive. And if you watch her, she'll... She'll get up, and she'll, she'll do and, yeah. some jump jacks, yeah. get some dynamic movement going, get the blood back in the muscles, and then she'll start a model, which is is um, basically a reenactment of the dive on the deck, and you'll see her do the motion that she'll need to do, and that's where she also kind of starts her visualization process, and and she was so locked in, <laughs> it was it was great to watch. You just knew that she was locked in and ready to go. Yeah, and, and before that, when in between dives, you had your headphones on. Was there is there anything on the playlist that two old guys like us would would know at all? Uh, I don't a know anything, or is it all? <laughs> I guarantee, you, I guarantee there's there. nothing on there for me. It would have been all Irish music if it had been me, but she wouldn't have any of that. What are you listening to on there? I don't know. It's it's all just a bunch of, like, just to get me hype. It's a whole lot of high-energy stuff. Good. Well, mostly rap or No, rock it's just, like, just... pop, kind of, just, like, to get me going. Okay. Like some throwbacks, like 2010 throwbacks. Throwbacks. Oh throwbacks 2010. There you go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's <laughs> make us feel older. <laughs> we'll talk about that last dive though. That's that uh, was the the, the 2.4 degree of difficulty. This is the forward the two and a half Somerset tuck, or some somersault tuck. It's not Somerset. Somersault uh, tuck. So people who don't know diving, kind of try to explain that to somebody. What what you're doing there off the one meter. Uh, so the, that's probably my hardest dive, which is why I put it last. Um, it's kind of a hit or miss for me, really. I know if I get a good start, I can always come out and find the end. But if I if I get like a bad hurdle, which is my approach, like the off the board, then I'll miss it. If I if I don't get a good hurdle, I can't really stay with the board. But I knew with how much adrenaline I had that I was gonna be able to have a good start. So I just had to stay relaxed on the hurdle, and I knew how to find the bottom on it. Yeah. And when you're when you're 11 dives overall, so when you're putting that list together, uh, do you think about that, or do you put one of the toughest ones at the end to get more points at the end? Kind of how do you structure? It, it, sure. So um, definitely, there's some strategy in how you put the list together. You there because of there's because of the cuts, you've got to have certain amount of DD 
on the front end, the degree of difficulty on the front end of your dive list to be sure that you keep making it through the stages. Now we weren't, didn't have any concern that Reagan was going to make the finals. We knew that she was going to make the finals unless something crazy happened. Um, so you want to have a mix of dives that have really good degree of difficulty, which amplifies your score, but also dives that you know she can hit. So you don't want to do some crazy hard dive that she's going to get threes on and not get the points. Mm -hmm. But she's done the two and a half, uh, what we call one at 105. She's done that for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she's comfortable with that dive. And just recently she's, um, she's gotten a lot stronger. Um, and so she's getting more height. And so that dive requires a lot of height because you're spinning two and a half times. And so you've got to finish that second flip well above the board in order to get down into the water. And that's sure enough. She just she soared on that on that uh, on that hurdle. She got a ton of height. And then sometimes you worry that it starts too good because they can over rotate and flop over. And if you watch the video, which I have done one million times, <laughs> she, she does a great job of what's called a pike save, where she just drags her feet under the water really quick so that the feet don't go over. And that's what caused that you know no splash and that what we call a rip just at the bottom. And she just pike saved it and pulled her legs underneath and. That's what she was thinking about. She'll tell you she was, you know, she knew, you know, at the top she was spinning really fast and she had to get her legs down. Yeah, so. yeah it, just, it just happens in a split second, but it walk yeah. us through that. It, so, when do you, when you kind of know you hit it? So on the board, I'm just like focused on just the hurdle when I'm on the board. So I'm focusing on relaxing my arms back on the swing and then holding my arms really tight at the top. And then when I was in the air, I was spinning super fast. So I knew I had to spot it and see where I was. And so I knew I was spinning really fast, so I was worried about going over. So I kicked out, and I could feel my legs moving. So I just sweeped it under <laughs> really quick, as fast as I could, so that I could save it. Yeah, I mean, so much of this just has to be muscle memory. And just yeah, it is. It, it really actually is. happens so quickly. You really, I get, imagine you really can't. Yeah, you can't. don't have time to think or react much when no. you're in the Yeah, air. you just. It really is muscle memory. You just have to know, like a lot of it. Sometimes you don't even spot it. Sometimes you just know where you are when you learn how to do that stuff. Cool. Well, I'm interested to know a little bit more about the kind of the diving community. I mean, obviously, it's not a sport that has, you know, it's not like baseball or soccer, but the, sure. there, there are lots of kids who do it across the state. But it's, I, I would assume the top divers, there's kind of a little group of you. They all, you all kind of know each other. Uh, obviously, Peyton Moore Cooper had won it two years in a row. You'd, you'd gone against her at the Kentucky High School Diving Invitational a couple of weeks ago. You beat her up there. Um, you, you must get to know these, these other girls pretty well and uh, see each other a lot and even maybe even train together. Yeah, um, so there are only a few girls on my club team, but I, I'm really close to my whole club team. But the other girls, they just train high school, but Peyton dives in a club up north. I don't really know where she dives, but she doesn't dive on my club. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we all get to know each other and we all talk and stuff and before the meets and stuff. We, get, we all really get close. Yeah, well, it seems it's obviously very competitive, but it seems very cordial too. I mean, yeah, everybody's it, rooting for each other down sure, there sure. Thursday. And yeah, it, and it is. It's interesting because you'll see it's a like a lot of Olympic sports. Um, the the kids that train all year round have, a, of course, have an advantage, mm -hmm. and you'll see that in diving. Of course, you'll see the the wide separation between the kids who train club claim you know all year round and those who just do it in high school. And so the ones that train all year round, of course, are spending a ton of time together. And also they see each other at the USA meets. So the USA is structured. You have a regional meet, then a zone meet, and then nationals. And so um, Peyton, of course, has been um, at a lot of the same regional meets as, as we have and zone meets as well. So yeah, we see we see those folks a lot. And, and that's what's nice about dive is so difficult. Um, and the kids go through so much battling fear and new dives and you know at a USA meet they're diving off platforms which are you know 35 feet in the air and so there's a there's a opportunity to bond over things that are really difficult to do and anytime you do those together there is that bonding opportunity and they just understand each other in ways that most people don't like I've never thrown myself off the third time <laughs> I don't know if you have but no, I have not so no, not uh, willingly yeah. that's for sure <laughs> so they, they understand each other ways we can so oh, it's not it's neat it's it's, it's a fun sport to be a yeah. part of and obviously not just uh, uh, that little group, but uh, you've had three daughters that have gone through yeah. this. So let's, let's go kind of go back and kind of sure. uh, recap this. And obviously this is the youngest of the three. Flannery yeah. was the oldest. And Laney and then 
Um, they all had great success, and I guess it all started with Flannery over at Arlington. It right? did, yeah, sure did. You know, and that's it's it's you know something that we've talked about as a family a lot is that you know Reagan's success has really built upon the success of Lanny and Flannery before, and and you know Flannery got everybody started. She started at Arlington, and and uh, Rebecca McPherson was the dive coach there. And I always like to mention Rebecca because she was so great as a teacher. She loved diving and she was wonderful teaching the basics. And Flannery took to it right away. She's kind of a very natural diver and, and she, you know, as eight years old, she didn't lose. And at the end of the year, she was like, can I keep doing this? We were like, well, I don't know if you can or not. I don't know. We didn't, I wasn't a diver and Brainy wasn't a diver, so we, didn't, we weren't sure. And so we found Kentucky Dive Club online and uh, Kentucky had just hired Ted Howtow and he had started a club. And Kentucky had had a very successful club in the past with their dive coach died of cancer, Mike Leiden, a very famous mm -hmm. dive coach. And Ted Howtow had taken over the program. And, and uh, so Flannery, as an eighth grader, or as, I'm sorry, as an eight year old, mm -hmm. uh, joined. And Laney and Reagan went along behind her. Cool. And uh, a great story about Reagan. So you couldn't go off. Uh, like, uh oh, here comes a good story you about could, me. You couldn't, <laughs> I heard that she went off. Oh, no. You couldn't, you couldn't go off the 10 meter platform until you weighed at least 60 pounds. Mm -hmm. And so when Reagan started, she was four years old. And so she could, they wouldn't allow her to go off the platform. That child weighed herself every day until she reached 60 pounds. And as soon as she reached 60 pounds, off she went. So <laughs> 10 meter, off she went. Never, not a bit of fear behind her. So, you know, so, you know following her older sisters made a big difference because she was able to, to have that training at a younger age and advance quicker. Um, you know, because the, the field had been plowed for in front of her. But, you know, the, the, and Laney too. Laney's, it's funny because uh, Flannery's a very natural diver, just came to, came to her very easily. Laney's a very technical mm -hmm. diver, likes to think her way through it very carefully. And Reagan's kind of a mix of both. She's, she's you know, she's very much a natural athlete, but she's also got that technical side where she likes to think her way through the dive. And as she explained to you what she was thinking about on yeah. the hurdle, you know, you can see that her mind is very, very technical. So it's a, it's a nice balance between the two. Yeah. Do you remember back in those early days when Flannery started? And I don't you, remember. You and Lady just kind of followed along, I guess? And I don't remember, but I do remember all the times where they helped me through everything. Like anything that I needed help with through diving, they were there to help me and to encourage me to get me through anything that I was scared of or going through. Yeah, well, and, and it's it's a it's a high pressure uh, sport. I mean, uh, one mistake, and there were even a couple of times Thursday where it, you know it looked like you know a, a couple of girls just barely missed the board coming back on a dive. So it uh, cause, yeah, because both um, you know, Flannery and, and Laney actually stepped away from the sport at times, right? They, they yeah, yeah. It, it, that's the thing. It's it's a, a sport you have to you have to have a passion for and. And as, as you might imagine, there are ebbs and flows with that. And, and when Flannery was in high school, she wasn't sure whether she wanted to dive in college or not. And so she needed to take a break, and she did. Mm -hmm. And then she came back to it on her own and was pleased that she did. And now she dives at East Carolina University mm -hmm. and is really enjoying it. And Lainey, um, who was also a very good diver, she, when COVID shut down the training, um, Kentucky Dive Club had to shut down their program because of COVID. Kentucky wouldn't allow them to train at the pool anymore. So there was about a period of about 18 months where there was no training, and that was just too much for Laney. She wasn't um, she wasn't passionate enough about it to make the sacrifices that Reagan did. We'll talk about that in a second, I'm sure, uh, to continue training. And uh, she shifted and started playing soccer. Mm -hmm. And dive's not the kind of sports you can stop training and still succeed at the top levels. And yeah. but that was fine with Laney. She she was she'd had all she wanted out of dive, and now she's managing UK's dive team and having a great time doing that. She's got she's got a coach's mentality. She'd be a wonderful dive coach, and she's helped Reagan mm -hmm. a lot with. Some of her technicals, they talk about when you come out and how to spot the water, and they talk about the spin rates <laughs> and all this stuff. I don't, I don't understand, but they get it. Yeah. So. And she, and she was there Thursday. Yeah, she was. That was cool. Did you, did you have to call Flannery right away? And let Flannery her was texting me the whole time. And the whole time. <laughs> and what was she telling you? She was just telling me to stay calm and just encouraging me. Yeah. And at the end, you had to, you got to tell her. Yep. Uh, I won. <laughs> and she finished second twice, Flannery. She did. She twice, did. So. She finished second twice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Flannery had a had a wonderful career. You know, she won regionals six or seven times in a row, and mm -hmm. and um, I don't think she ever finished out of the top five at state. Um, she was second in her while well, she was in high school. She was second twice, third once, and fourth once. So, um, yeah, she had a wonderful career. Yeah. Well, like your dad was saying, they're talking about training during COVID. And, not being able to really get in the pool and um, like I said, like he was talking about earlier, you can kind of visualize things and you can kind of, 
you know, on the pool deck there, you can kind of walk through it or uh, that type of thing, but obviously nothing is the same as actually jumping off that board into the water. Yeah, it was really hard when they shut down because you just kind of feel like you're going to fail. And it's kind of like when you feel like you're going to fail, you don't know how to keep going. So we went down to Moultrie, Georgia, and I went to a couple camps there just to get off the board and try to keep training as much as I could. And there we, the Tennessee club team was there. And so my dad talked to their coach, Mike Wright at the time, and he was like, I think we're going to try to come down there and train. So we started it in March, right? Yes, University Mar of Tennessee. March or April at, at Tennessee's club team. And um, I did it for like nine months every day for five days a week. It was a lot, but it was worth it. You guys it. like basically live down there? Yeah, it was. It was. Well, we no, she we we pick her up. So yeah, their there, their yeah. practice started at five thirty in Knoxville, and they practiced from five thirty to seven thirty Monday through Friday. And so right. the timing worked out okay. It's two hours from Richmond to Knoxville, so we get in the car at three fifteen at Madison Southern. We drive to Knoxville. Um, she would go to practice, and then we would turn around and come home. She'd get home about ten o'clock every night, and she'd do her homework on the way or nap and. So uh, we rented an office down there so Brandy and I could work while she was in there in her practice. I should say Brandy could work. I, I, I didn't do a lot of that. <laughs> uh, I had more fun. But, uh, it, uh, you know, it just I, you know that's important to me that people know that she's built that way because that's what it took. You know, it, it took somebody willing to find whatever she could to keep mm -hmm. working and keep practicing, yeah. and and that was Knoxville, and it was a great experience for her down there. That's a great Mike Wright. It's a, He's a great coach. He's the head coach at South Carolina now. Um, but it's a great team down there with a lot of really good people that uh, she had a good experience with. So we're, we're real th thankful for them. And then Kentucky opened their club team back up in January um, of last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So and, and hired a new club coach uh, named Julia Vincent, who's phenomenal. She's a South African Olympian and uh, going to dive in the next Olympics as well. And she's, she's really good. And she and Reagan have built a great relationship. And you saw a lot of her touches on Reagan's diving in this meet. She was, uh, she's been really impactful in her training. In addition to the going to Lexington all those all those times and going to Knoxville, you you've racked up thousands and thousands of miles. On the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I added it up one time, and it's it's I can't even now. It's six figures how many miles the girls have traveled in their career to different meets, and it's well over a hundred thousand miles of travel. So it's 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 crazy. It's not over yet. It's only a change. That's right. One that's right. That's go. right. Yeah, plenty more to see. Plenty more to see. So you got the championship now, but where do you go from here? You got I'm sure you got regional. Yeah. And, uh, so. Since high school season's over now, I'm just focused on club season, which is my first meet is in April, which is regionals. If I make it on from there, then it's zones in July. Then if I make it from there, it's nationals, which is in Mission Viejo, California. So. Okay. And it's so interesting. I mean, you, you know, it's, it's been basically you, you three, your, your three daughters. I mean, yeah. you had the, we had Cecilia Cobb, I think, for a little while. And right. then there's a young lady, what, named Sarah Morris, I think, right. from, uh, from Madison Central. But it's kind of been just, just you guys yeah. as far as diving, you, you know. Sure, yeah. You, you and Sarah were the only two people at the yeah. regional yeah. competition, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, when we started, uh, Southern didn't have a dive team. And Flannery, you know, of course, wanted to dive, and, and she was having a lot of success. And so she said, what? Dad, what are you gonna? I said, all right, well, we'll start a dive team. And yeah. So I met with the people at Southern, found out what we needed to do, and and got certified as a coach, and and off we went. And um, you know, Flannery is a sixth grader, won regionals, and so at the time, when Flannery was coming up, uh, the region included all of the Lexington schools. Um, at, at some point, there was a split, and then the Lexington schools became their own region, and, and so Reagan doesn't had dove against those kids in the regionals but at the time Flannery was coming through that was all the powerhouse but if you won the regional meet you had a really good chance of winning the state meet and so that was kind of a big deal when Flannery was coming through to win those regionals but yeah we, we had to start the thing so yeah. Yeah, hey, do, it, yeah. do it yourself, you know. So, <laughs> That's so right. Blaze That's the trail. Right. That's right. Now I have to ask you though, because I was I was standing up top with Jay Simmons, and you came out for your first um, your first dive of the of the semifinals, and Jay Jay said, "I think I think that's Reagan, but you're wearing blue." And I know that's maybe not a big thing in diving to wear the school colors, 
But it was, well, it was much more, it, was, it wasn't the, the southern blue either, so. The story on that is I <laughs> couldn't find my suit the night before. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I had to wear the blue suit, oh. and I was like, it's close enough. Yeah. You have like an orange, you have like an orange one? I know, I have a navy one. A navy one, okay. So yeah, that, that's the, this, that's this the one was, I usually wear. Yeah, this wear was the much more the, and yeah, I couldn't find the southern it, so, blue. Yeah. I was like, that's like losing your helmet on the sideline. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> where, you where else would it be? Where, where do you... I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. Well, now you got to wear that other one all the time, though, right? Yep. <laughs> that's the championship. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she came out, and I'm like, and he's like, I think that's her. And I'm like, really? Really? <laughs> <Blue? laughs> but hey, maybe there's some karma there. Yeah, maybe it was so. Maybe it was so. just uh, supposed to be. So, all right. Well, it was uh, awesome. It was such a great, uh, I mean, I've been... Uh, I've been watching you guys for a couple yeah. of years now, and you guys come so close and so close. And uh, like I said, it looked like it was going to be another second place finish, and then you, you just killed it there at the end. So it was an amazing moment, and yeah. uh, I'm, I'm uh, so happy for you guys. And well, thank, thank you so you. much. So, yeah. so congratulations, thank and you. thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. I know it's a little bit cold in here. <laughs> Rainy never turns on the heat in here. <laughs> But uh, I guess you don't have to worry about that when you're in the water, right? So. <laughs> She's a diver. She's a diver. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that'll wrap up this week's edition of the Richmond Register Sports Show. We'll be back next Sunday with a brand-new edition at 9 o'clock. And, of course, best place to keep up with uh, Madison County Sports is on Twitter, Richmond R Sports, and on Facebook at Register Sports. So have a good week. See you next time. Miller's Tire and Auto Care. Need to hire experienced technicians, oil change, tire technician, tow truck drivers, exceptional benefits, and pay. Drop your resume off at Miller's Tire on the Big Hill Avenue location. The Richmond Register Sports Show is brought to you by Metronet. Super fast internet, simply a better connection. Total Comfort, heating and air conditioning. Let Total Comfort keep you cool or warm this winter. Call for service or for a free replacement quote. Winds Auto Detailing Service. Platinum Roofing, Solar and Green Solutions. Voted Richmond's Best Roofer seven years in a row. And by KYMedia.net. Digital Media Solutions on your turn. Thanks for watching the Richmond Register Sports Show. For more information about all things sports in Madison County, log on to richmondregister.com or on Twitter. And like us, Register Sports, on Facebook. Get the Richmond Register directly to your mailbox or get the app online and visit richmondregister.com.